Wednesday, and she's had a rough time. You ladies might want to, um, as she's probably watching right now, get in touch with her, telling you, praying for her uh, during this, this dark time. And there's some people going through some mighty rough time, not just because of the, the pandemic, but other stuff, other problems. This thing has caused a lot of other problems and fixing to cause a whole lot more. Ain't no doubt about it. So uh, don't, don't forget to pray uh, for her and ask the Lord to bless her uh, and, and bring her through this surgery all right. Now, Psalm uh, 85 there, we're going to start there tonight. And the Lord began, was dealing my heart all week about this. I'd like to preach a sermon tonight that would help prepare our hearts for getting ready for our revival in just a few weeks. Psalm 85, verse 6. Everybody knows that verse. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? The word revive means come back alive. That's why when a church needs revival, that means you've died and you need to come back alive. And it says again, again, wilt thou not revive us again? That's in there for a reason. Uh, somebody said, well, those revivals, one, a lot of churches have three and four a year. And people say, see, that's just a waste. They don't last. Well, a bath don't last, right? A shower don't last. You have to take another. Wilt thou not give me a shower again? And then you get dirty, wilt thou not shower again? You need revivals over and over. Wilt thou not revive us again? One dose of salvation will do you, but one revival won't. They, they, they wired, oh, if it's real, it'll last. Salvation will. The revival don't. It wears off, and you have to have another one and another one and another one. So we, uh, uh, hopefully before then and already even now, are praying and having revival. Now, August 24th, 5th, and 6th, we are having what we call official revival services. No doubt, many have questioned my timing and uh, uh, judgment and wisdom of doing this. There ain't no doubt in my mind. I can read some of y'all's mind, especially all, people looking at home, and and they're saying this. Preacher, uh, I, 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 I am not telling you what to do. You pray and you do whatever God tells you to do, but don't you really think it would be better to wait until all this is over? You don't have to smile. It'll hurt my feelings if you do, if you've already thought that. But I, I promise you, I guarantee you, uh, people have thought, uh, don't you think maybe to, you should wait until things settle down a little bit, and we can have everybody in here in the church packed and and have a revival and go out to eat like we do at the camp meeting. And uh, my answer to that is no. Okay? <laughs> I don't think that. I think we need revival. I think we need revival. If you wait till it's, all this is over, it may not get over. If you wait till everything smooths out, it may not all smooth out. If you wait till everything settles down, it ain't going to settle down. As a matter of fact, if there's ever been a time when people need revival, it's now. Yeah, Lord, have mercy. We don't, uh, don't, don't start this stuff. Well, let's wait a while. Well, we done waited too long. Oh, we, we need revival. We need revival. I'm going to say two things tonight about this, and then I'm going to make some announcements. Uh, we'll go. I think we need revival, number one, because of the condition of this world. The condition of this world is absolutely unbelievable. I, in Texas, they talked about it. Everywhere I go, they talk about it. They said, I would have never believed that things would have changed that much in such a short period of time. You realize how much the world has changed since March of this world? If you'd have told me six months ago that something was going to happen and they wasn't even going to have school. Uh, all the schools were out. I wouldn't believe that. 9-11 uh, didn't even, it might have shut a school or two down in New York and the rest of 90.99.9 just kept right on going like nothing ever happened. 
This thing shut the school system down. This thing uh, made our economy almost grind to a terrible stop and slowed it down. The world tonight is in bad, bad shape. There is political unrest, the hate, the lies. Uh, you know, you know there's, there's no telling what could have been accomplished uh, in the last few months if political leaders, leaders could all work together and do right and do the right thing. There's no telling. But if, if listen, if, there's, if a man comes up with something that's good, the people that disagree with him politically will say, no, 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 just because they don't like the guy or vice versa, because they don't like the guy. And you know what? They're, they're, they have turned this thing into a political fight. I, I don't think I've ever seen a disease become a political fight since AIDS uh, back in the uh, early, early 80s. And I remember preaching about that and all, but this thing has absolutely become a become an issue of, well, if you believe this, you're siding with this crowd. If you believe this, you're siding with that crowd. And it's it, there's a lot of political unrest. If it were not for crooked politics, we could probably have saved a lot of lives already and probably saved thousands and thousands and thousands of more. Maybe they don't know it, but they're working toward that global plan. There is a bunch of people, y'all, that are trying to get this world politically, uh, economically, religiously into a one world government and it's called global. Uh, a person is a globalist, then they believe that uh, 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 we should all be one world. Uh, before I got on that airplane, one of the airplanes I got on, uh, in Texas yesterday morning, they put them big signs on the side of them airplanes and I always pray. Right before I get on the airplane, I pray. As soon as I get on there, I pray because people have been cussing that thing all day long and I don't want to get on one that's cussed uh, and cursed by God. You know, that blank plane and that blank, I don't want to get on one that's blanked. And, uh, and I sit down and I say, Lord, take all the dams off of this thing. Take all the curses off of this thing. But underneath are the everlasting arms. I always say that. I can see his arms holding it through the sky. I mean, you're going 37,000 feet, y'all, and it's 500 mile an hour. That ain't smart. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, I got on there and a big old sign on the side of that plane said, one world, one world. Just, just, it's like we're being programmed to accept. We're being programmed to believe in a one world government. Uh, they, somebody said this. They ought to call it the common core virus because something don't add up, amen. Ain't that right? I'm telling you something, brother. Uh, we, we are politically at unrest, political unrest. And then I want to say we have racial unrest. All of the hate, all of the riots, all of the, there's probably more hate now than ever before thanks to the crazy people out there fighting and fussing. And I'm, the answer to racial problems in this country is people to get right with God. If you get your heart with God, right with God, you don't hate nobody. You don't think you're better than nobody. If, if, a, if a white person hates a person because they're black, they're wrong. If a black person hates a person because they're white, they're wrong. I'm telling you tonight, I, I'm, I'm just about, I, I'm sick of having to just tiptoe around and not being able to say nothing. People, the answer is getting right with God. There ain't nothing. You, we need revival. We need revival. Revival will make everybody love each other. You say, oh, Brother Danny, you're dreaming. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Passing laws ain't going to make people love each other. And, and getting rid of laws ain't going to make each other love each other. You can pass a law. You can't do this, this, and that. But people still going to hate. Haters going to hate. And they, they hate because they're full of the devil. People hate each other because they are full of the devil. Do you hear me? And, and people get mad at you because you don't support them. Look, look, you are guaranteed. Thank God for our Constitution. Our Constitution has allowed us to meet in here tonight. Thank God for our, our, our First Amendment rights that we have the freedom to assemble and we are in here tonight gathered together as a church. That same constitution guarantees people the right to peaceably protest. It really does. Yeah, I'm all for protest. I don't blame them for protesting people like the death of George Floyd. I really don't. But the second 
The second that you take something in your hand and destroy property and burn something or tear something else out, you are not a protester. You are a rioter and should be arrested. It does not matter what race you are. You are breaking the law. That's how far we've got away from common biblical sin. And anybody who can't see that needs to think biblically instead of politically or racially. Listen, people, you know me. God loves everybody. I ain't no better than nobody else. I'm probably worse than most people. I don't claim to be better than nobody. My kids ain't no better. Lord, but I mean, brother, we got, we're got we all sinners. So there ain't nobody no better than nobody else. But I'm telling you tonight, the, the answer to our racial problems tonight and the rioting and all of that is, is not passing laws and not tying up stuff and burning burning down businesses. The answer is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and getting our heart right with God. Racial disrespect. Not only that, the world messed up racially, the world's messed up politically, but think about scientifically. Scientifically. I'm going to be preaching on this pretty soon more when I do some stuff on the, the end times and giant, but you know uh, what scientists are working on now uh, they're, they're trying to move toward a society of mingling, that's in Daniel, uh, iron with clay. That means they're putting machines in human beings. We're moving in a time, what they call post-human. And they're creating hybrid, hybrid human beings that are machines and man-made. Old Elon Musk and a bunch of people like that they're talking about, people like that are talking about transhumanism. And what that is is an extension of humanism using technology to go beyond normal human capabilities. Use synthetic, artificial, and upload and use a computer that's put in a person's head or body that interacts with their brain and makes them super smart or super this, or super that, and even messing with people's DNA. China, Russia, come and see, we, for, we forget about something. We forget about something. They say, well, well, the United States will never allow, allow our scientists uh, to do something that messes with the way people are shaped and conceived, and, and or uh, maybe the United States might not, but them other countries don't have no kind of conscious of respect for family, human like me and you do. They don't believe in the family. They, uh, atheistic Russian, uh, Chinese the scientists do not believe in any kind of values. They don't have any kind of respect for human dignity like me and you where we believe a man and a woman get married. They have a children. They are trying to fix it so that you can order your kids, put in an order. I want a, I want a, a boy. I want him to be 5 foot 10. I want him to have an IQ of 160. I want him to have, and eventually just create this super race of people. That, that's where they want. You say, oh, Brother Danny, that'll never happen. I'd believe that too if I didn't have, read the Bible. And the Bible talks about stuff like Iron Man. The Bible talks about mingling, mingling the seed of men, toe, iron and clay, iron and clay, sons of God, daughters of men and the family values as we know it, the absence of religious beliefs and family values because that's what causes all the wars in the world, religion. So we got to get rid of that. And they're going to a world, you can look it up, look up World Economic Forum, World Economic Forum. Forum. You can Google it. And it talks about the fourth industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution was water and steam a uh, long time ago. And then there came the second one, electricity. When electricity was invented, the world was, man, we moved into another uh, life in, in this world. Then the third one was electricity and technology in the industrial revolution. And you know what the next one is? The next one is higher technology put inside where humans leap up to a higher form of life where we can all be superhumans. And I'm telling you, we need revival because there are scientists at work while we sit here tonight that would turn our kids into robotic zombies in the future if the Lord don't come. 
We need revival because of the condition of the world. The entertainment world is unbelievably wicked. I mean, you hear about, you're hearing all this stuff now that just boggles your mind. And, and famous, uh, that um, Corey Feldon, that used to be a little actor on one of them shows, and even Justin Bieber has hinted to it another, about the pedophilia and stuff in Hollywood that, honest, uh, one of my girls sent me something. She said, Daddy, you think it's true? I said, I don't want to believe that, but I, I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, where there's actually animal and uh, they have all kind of bestiality and big old giant parties and, and drink blood, drink human blood. And that's what they did back in the Old Testament. That's what sin leads to. You know, sin, one sin leads to another sin and another sin leads to another sin and another sin. And you know what the bottom of the barrel is? Somebody said it's homosexuality. No, that's next to the last step. The next to the last step is messing with little kids. That's as low down as it gets because a kid don't have no kind of will or resist. We're talking babies, people. We're talking little. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say too much in front of a, a mixed crowd like this, but we are talking some of the most big names in Hollywood uh, where there's un godly, un, you can't even imagine, me and you, me and you can't even, even, even imagine a person, the pedophilia that's going on would just about turn your stomach. We need revival. Listen, God's not going to bless America with a bunch of junk like that. And by the way, we ain't seen no great turning back to God in this country. Everybody's going right on like they, people say, well, the coronavirus has been good. I don't see it. I don't see it. You might have a few here and there. You might have a few people get woke up. But buddy, this thing has set us back nine miles. This thing has set the world back, set the church back. Uh, we thought, boy, it's good that bars are closed. Guess what? They're getting drunk at home. They say that, uh, uh, is it snap, snap, snap? Snapchat has gone out the roof of everybody staying at home sending naked pictures of themselves to each other. All over the neighborhoods, all over the park, all the kids, the adults, and all that says absolute. Listen, you know what God destroyed this world for the first time? Because every, are you listening to me? God destroyed the world because every imagination of the man's heart was evil continually. He could not think of nothing without thinking something dirty out of it. God help us tonight. And I'll say secondly tonight, the condition of our churches. The condition of our churches. I've, book, I've quoted this last two weeks. 67% are not even having church. You seen that big crowd over yonder this morning? Two rows full of them over there this morning? Man told me, he said, we're, we're tired of it. He said, our church, all they do is online. They said, we're tired of staying home, preacher. We want to go to church. We want to go to church. And I said, well, you're welcome. God bless you. Drove over iron, iron, about an iron and a half to get here, I guess. 67% of the church. In California, it's, it's against the law to meet like we're meeting in here tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, they're saying, they're saying, well, Brother Danny, you've got to understand there's a pandemic. I do understand there's a pandemic. I do understand people are sick. I do understand people are dying. I do understand it. I'm not crazy. I'm not unreasonable. But I'm, I'm telling you this evening, people, there's something where the devil is doing everything in his power to shut the church down. It's, it's, we're being, they're being singled out in a lot of places. I mean, you can go in a bar. You can go in an abortion clinic, but you cannot go in the house of God. They threaten one church out there that's going to turn the going to turn the electricity off, going to cut their power off if they didn't quit having church. And I, I think you should obey the law. I understand about the six feet distancing. I understand. I believe if a man makes an executive order, we should do the best we can to obey. I got it. I get all that about the mask and all that. I'm not against that. Anything that makes sense, I, I'm, I'm for and all that. But there, there's something going on. It's not It's it's not just people. There's a The, the devil is taking a, a, a advantage of this situation to knock people out. Do you, you listen to me tonight? I don't know if you come to sit and you, you, don't, you don't realize this. I'm the pastor. I see it. But there are thousands of people that will never go back to church. They've done got backslid. I know some. I know some. And I'm not saying, listen, all you people listen at home, don't you get me wrong. I understand we got a disease going around or a, a, a virus going around. 
I'm not saying you should risk your life and come in. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying if you're sick and run a fever, you should come. I'm not saying that. I'm not even talking about you. I'm not even talking about you that are at home right now that in your heart you'd love to be here. I, we got a lot of people like that. I get texts. I get on, Brother Danny, I wish I was there. I'd love to be there. I can't because of mama or I can't because of that. I understand that, and I don't condemn anybody for that. Anybody who feels it risky, like Brother Wayne, people that's been sick or people have an elderly person, I, I get it, I get it. I am not condemning you. You know what I'm talking about? People who are glad about this. Oh, boy, I don't have to go to church no more. Woo, here's my way out. No more church for me. And there will be tens of thousands that will not come back to, I'm not talking about just this church, every church. We're blessed. We're blessed. We got some people in here that love the Bible and love the Lord and love the church. We're blessed. There's a lot of them, brother. They're, I don't know if they're going to make it or not. There's a lot of them ain't had a service since the middle of March and don't even have online. Got a sign out front that says, closed till further notice. What's going to happen to all them kids? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to their Sunday school class? People say, "Well, it's just as good to stay at home and watch." It's better than nothing, but it is not as good. It is not. I've never done it, but they say everybody comes in here. Said Brother Danny, we watched every service, but it ain't like being there. I don't know about you, but I, I've got to have it, buddy. I got to have it. I got to go to the house of God. They, they, listen, when I got saved, the Lord put a love in my heart for the church, and I love to go to church, and I love to be able to hear people sing and, and fellowship and see each other. Listen, brother, our churches are in trouble tonight. We need revival. We don't need to even wait three weeks. We need revival. We need revival. I'm not fussing about the people that have to stay home because of different reasons. I'm talking about the people that are glad they don't have to come. That's sad. I wish that somebody would say something to me about, well, Brother, brother, brother Danny, you've got them 100 people or something, 200 people or whatever. We don't have that 200 here tonight. But in that building, look at here. Look at here, y'all. I don't know how many people here tonight, not 200, but I, if we did have, you look how high this ceiling is. You look how wide this building is. Let me tell you how hypocritical that the, the government is about that. The governor's going after churches. And if, if one person gets sick, God forbid, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. It's amazing that they don't shut that workplace down where that person went. I got on that airplane uh, Thursday going to Texas and it, it, that's the most unbelievable hypocrisy I've ever seen in my life. They had, the airplane is like three seats, like where, where Jeff is there, three there and an aisle and three here and the ceiling's right here. And here's how close they're sitting. That's my elbow. Elbow to elbow. I, this big guy sitting beside me took up more than his share of the little thing. I couldn't move and touch his elbow. And he moved and I started to say, Move over, buddy. But I didn't. I, I was not, he was a big old guy. And uh, I felt sorry for him, really, because uh, I could cross my legs and do like this and stretch and twist around like that. He had to sit like this the whole time. I could take my hand and touch seven people. One right there. I actually sat on the window, the window yesterday. He was there. Another lady there. One, two, three, four, five. I could, sit, I could touch six people with my hand that far away from me. And it wasn't but this, one, two, three, four, five, this big, and as long as I'm here, the back door out there, I bet there's 150 people on there. And the government keeps saying the way to spread the coronavirus is be in the same area sitting for a long period of time. Ain't that what they say? So that's why you got to close the church. And them hypocrites are running them airplanes all over the United States right now. You reckon if somebody that was on that flight yesterday got sick, they'd shut that airline down? No, they would not. You know why? Love of money. Love of money. It don't matter when there's money involved. Well, 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 you're a foot, brother. If a church can't have church, listen, I believe, I believe if, I, if 150 people get in an airplane and sit there for two hours and 42 minutes, 
time you get on, time you get off, three and a half. Hey, if they can sit there, then we can sit here spaced out like this in the house of God with a mask on and worship the Lord and breathe the air and worship God and leave here when we get through. Amen. Amen. What a bunch of hypocrites. Them airplanes. I mean, there are thousands of them. Wonder if, wonder if the mayor of Los Angeles has gone to the airport lately and seen that. The planes are full. I honestly thought, I thought, well, they'll probably leave the middle seat open because I've been brainwashed into thinking you got to do that. And I think they should, really. I think they should. That's just very contagious. And I, I was on there and I just said, well, Lord, here goes Matt. And, and, and I kept pulling the mess down, pulling the mess down. I, said, I can't breathe. Uh, uh, that's, that's not good for you uh, all day long like that. For a little while, it's all right. But all day long, it's not good for you. And I, and I, I kept saying, what am I doing? <laughs> and I finally thought, well, my life's in your hands, Lord. And that's all you can do. You do the best you can do. Wash your hands. Don't touch nothing. Stay socially distant. Stay away from people. Don't shake hands. And come and worship God and honor God and hear the priest and get a blessing for your soul if you can. Now, if you can't or you're in a high-risk group or somebody in your family, okay, I understand that. I'm not fussing. I'm not fussing at y'all people sitting at home unless you want to be there on purpose. I've been in church since I was 18 years old. The time may come when I can't go. Probably will. I ain't missed a, church, I ain't missed a Sunday in church in 35 years. And I've never, you've heard me say it. And I mean, I am the oldest preacher that I know. God's been good to me. God's been good to me. I, I don't, I'm not bragging. I'm saying this to give him the glory. In, in 45 years preaching, I have never one time had to miss church because of, of health reasons. I had a snowstorm or they canceled it or something like that because of being sick. God's been good to me. The Lord's been good to me. I thought about Brother Bobby. He loved church. He loved the Lord. He hadn't been here in a while. Uh, he's been sick. But thank God, brother, his heart was here. His heart was here. We got people sitting out there right now at home tonight, uh, uh, and their, their heart's here. God bless. You know why? The condition of our churches. I expect the wicked world to hate the church. I expect the wickedness of this world to turn against the church. I expect the wicked world to blame the church. If, 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 if somebody, I've heard out in Minnesota, out in California, there's some people got the coronavirus, and people said, hey, they went to that church service out there on the beach. They don't say one thing about the protest. They went to the protest. Uh, just shut up, man. Just shut up. Uh, you don't know if you might have got it at the post office. You don't know. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, they, the world. I expect the world to hate the church, but I do not expect Christians just to give in and bow down and just give up church every time the devil says boo. Amen. The big majority of churches. And, and please, here's where we get off. People say, well, Brother Danny, we, we can still... Uh, get to, and that's and I'm glad I'm glad for online. Really, I am. But the big majority of churches ain't seen one soul saved since March. How are you gonna get people saved watching online or even like it is here? I invite people to church all the time. They say you're having church. I said, yeah. Is the government? Is the Senate and Congress meeting? We're more important than the Senate and the Congress. Amen. You say, Brother Danny, you're not more important than, than a congressman. I'm not, but the church is. If I can't come, y'all be here anyway. I'll haunt you too if you don't. I'll, I'll die and come back and haunt you. There's a big majority have not seen one soul saved in five months. And we don't need revival. The altars of churches around this country. Even the ones that are not able to have church right now because people are sick. And that's the pastor's call between him and the Lord and I do not disagree with it. I know some that are having to do that right now. A bunch of people get sick, everybody stay home for two weeks, come back. I'm not against that. If that's what God leads that pastor to do, fine, great. But there's no reason in the world why every church can't have eight or ten men. That ain't even against the law. On Monday night, 
eight or ten women on Tuesday night spaced out across the altar shedding tears for their lost loved ones and begging God to get this mess out of here and revive us again that the church be full and the kids get right and the little boys and girls get Sunday school. They don't get Sunday school, y'all listen to me. They don't get to go in their class, see their teacher. They don't let to go to the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. They don't get to draw a picture and color and put it up on the way. Listen, are we crazy that we need revival? Need revival. We just don't care that all that's gone. Does it not bother y'all that that's not gone? Or you just think of yourself? Well, as long as I get to hear a little preaching once a week, preacher, that's all that matters. What, what about everybody? Else? What about the bus kids? Listen, we're saved. What about people that ain't? Online's not enough. I, I thank God it's there, and I thank God for all you people listening. I hope you keep it up. Well, let's get them buses running. Anybody else agree with me? I hope you do. I'm gonna tonight. I'm gonna point some days. Miss Desi can come, and we're gonna pray. We're going to have two or three good prayer meetings. The Lord said where two or three are gathered together. I'm not through preaching yet, so leave that thing off. There am I in the midst of them. I, I meet people all the time. Well, we're, we're you know, having church at my church. Well, what's, what's stopping two or three of you from going down there and getting together and begging God to help us? I'll tell you what it is. The backslid. Stopping us from visiting. Oh, you can't visit. Really? Tell that to the insurance men. Tell that to the social workers. They visit. You can't knock on somebody's door and stand like this and when they open the door say, here you are. We're from Shining Light Baptist Church. We'd love to have you. And hand it to them. You don't touch them. You don't get within six feet of them. You can't do that. Or are you just glad and that's an excuse because you really don't want to anyway. I'm asking you, ask yourself that hard question. We're going to be doing some visiting. We're going to have a special men's prayer meeting on August 15th on Saturday night. We're going to have some work done here tomorrow evening, Lord willing. Even if it's raining, we're going to work inside. We're going to have a special youth Soul winning night on August 22nd with pizza and ice cream back here after we get through. Just take the young people. we got some little flyers that big. Take them out and give them out to all the young people in Morgan at, at the, wherever they're going. Out there at the restaurant, Pizza Hut, and invite them to church. This ain't no time for us just to roll over and die and say, oh well, for the greater good, we'll just shut the door. No, 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 it ain't, it ain't time to do that. It's time to fight back. I don't want nobody getting sick. I don't want nobody acting stupid. I don't want you to run out of here and think you're invulnerable or immune. Because you might be sick tomorrow and I might too. But I'm not going to use that for an excuse to keep from doing what God wants us to do and have a revival. Amen. We're going to pray. On August 22nd, all the young people are going to meet out here about 5 or 6 o'clock, teenagers especially. Take them out, hit the trailer park, hit the apartment building, say, we're going to have a back-to-school revival, and we want you to come. You say, well, Brother Denny, where are we going to put them? We'll figure that out. If a 500 show up, we'll have a double feature, like I used to do at the movies. <laughs> Amen. Well, half in, they can leave and do it again. Amen. I'm sure Brother, Brother Spears wouldn't mind that one bit. I understand that are the, are the schools in Burke County, they're not even going to school, are they, that, that, them first few weeks in person, right? Somebody, anybody know? Right, that's right. I don't know about Catawba, same thing. About, I don't know about Catawba. That's your choice, you get to choose. Well, in Burke County, they're not even going to school. McDowell, I think you got a choice. So 
when, when I scheduled this revival, we didn't know if it was going to be school or not. But it's working out real good. And we're not going to have stay real late. We're going to keep that in mind that they got school the next day, some of them. But the ones that are online and stuff, uh, it won't matter anyway. And we're going to have a revival. I'd like to have a revival. I'd like for God to give us a revival, wouldn't you? You say, well, Brother Danny, what about, well, what about it? You ain't, you ain't do nothing about it, no way. It ain't going to go away with just us sitting here. We might as well do something for God while we can. Nothing risky. Nothing risky. I'm not talking about hugging all over each other and stuff like that. But I'm talking about having revival. As a matter of fact, shouting ain't the sign of revival. And I love it, and I do it, and I'm all for it. Running aisles ain't a sign of revival. And I do it, and I love it. And I'm all for it. That's us expressing our emotions, praising God. You know what the sign you get right with God is? You'll go witness somebody. That's a sign right there. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses. You'll be witnesses. So if you ain't witnessing, I hate to be so blunt and ugly, but you need help from the Lord to put His Spirit on you to witness somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come out to me and I'll make you fishers of men. We're going to do it by the help of the Lord. Let's stand, please. Why we need revival. If you want to come and pray, come on. Come on. Right now, just come. Let's get in this altar. Make, we've got plenty of room to stay apart from each other. God bless you. God bless you. You might come down and say, Lord, I need that. Oh, Lord, I needed that. Lord, I needed that. Lord, I need revival. I need revival. God, I, I've let this thing sort of dull my spiritual senses and God, I need to get back on fire. The coronavirus shouldn't stop you from being on fire for God. It shouldn't, it shouldn't stop you from being on fire for God. It shouldn't stop you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord, help us tonight. Lord, I pray that you bless everybody here and on this altar tonight. Bless everybody watching at home, those that are at work, those that are traveling or gone, vacation, whatever. God, please, watch over them. Father, we pray. We love you. Lord Jesus, do a great work in our church tonight. Lord, please, God, please, Lord, please, 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 God, send a great revival. Lord, send a move of your spirit, Lord. Send a great revival uh, here in the next few weeks. God, start it tonight. Lord of God, start it tonight. Help us to make up our mind. We're going to witness to people this week. Get some tracts. Hand them out. Be a witness. And be a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it, Lord. We'll thank you for it. We love you. God, I pray that you bless everybody on this altar. Lord, as we turn from everything wicked and wrong that we've been doing, anybody in here been sinning or anything like that, God, help them tonight to quit it, to quit it. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. And do what you'd have them to do. God, do a great and mighty work. God, bless Brother, Brother Spears and, and the singers and God, put the anointing power of the Holy Ghost on him. Keep him safe. God, protect him from the coronavirus. And on all of us too, Lord, we ask you that you would. God, please keep that bubble of protection over us, Lord, we pray. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen.